Andrew and I were in Drumline, and so we knew each other, and we were all kind of, we decided, you know, we figured out we were on the same kind of music, because we were on the bus to band camp, and I was listening to my band, my band, my garage band at the time, it was called Agent Orange, and um, it involved me on guitar, and my first time singing, pretty much my first time singing, I had a band in fifth and sixth grade with my friend John White called Daydreamer, but that was just a two-piece, sometimes three-piece with Mike. Um, so I'm giving, giving you the timeline on how I became a musician, basically. So I played with uh, with John, John White, my buddy from from uh, Virginia, who that, that's a great story I'll tell sometime, too. The John White story is a really touching story. Um, but I played with him, and then I made friends with uh, Mike and Jay, and so then John moved away. That's part of the sad story, but it's actually a happy story. So John moved away, and Jay kind of took over drums. Jay from Just Like Vinyl. He lived right next door to me. He's like my older brother. Um, and then Mike took over bass. Me and Mike would switch. Like, he'd play guitar sometimes, and then I would uh, hop over and play bass. Like, sometimes we'd do Primus covers or whatever if I could get him to, but... At this point, we kind of decided we wanted to write, uh, you know, original tunes. Jay jumps in, Mike is playing bass, and I'm playing guitar and singing, basically. Uh, and that was Agent Orange. And we would record... I don't know, man, I figured out so many crazy ways to, like, record things back in the day when I was younger. Like, we, I had this little tape deck. Back when uh, tapes were a thing, it was like this big... It was like a boombox, basically, but it had, like, its own built-in mic, or you could plug mics into it, and it had a, a graphic EQ on it. And the graphic EQ actually worked when you would, um, like you could press record and it, you could actually record, you know, onto tapes. It didn't sound too bad. It had a pretty good little internal mic, but, you know, at this point, we were just also fascinated with amplifiers. And, you know, my dad had a bunch of amps, you know, he had like, we had this little 12 inch guitar amp from the, from the sixties called a Mitchell. Um, that was a badass little solid state amp that I wish. I wish we wouldn't have trashed so bad, and I wish I still had, because it was such a crazy little amp. It was kind of like a Fender combo, but it was like a 112 or a 110, and it was just so noisy. Cool, though. I, I'd run that congruent with my dad's, like, PV 15-inch bass amp, and somehow I figured out how to run out of the Mitchell into that amp, and then I'd mix those two, and I don't know. Then I got a Big Muff and a Fuzz Face, and I thought it was some serious shit. <laughs> and then Mike would play out of... Um, my dad had gotten an Eden, an Eden head, which at the time was the shit. They're still really cool, um, like tube in the preamp kind of things. Then he had a 4x10 cabinet. But we always had amps coming through, and then we met some cats that, you know, whatever. And then we started kind of getting our own amps. Mike got a Marshall half stack, and I was so jealous, I remember. I remember, uh, before Mike left the band, like, I, I, I wanted a fucking, um, a Les Paul so bad. So bad. And I had, like, a Stratocaster. I had my dad's old old Strat, which I still have in pieces, but I want to put it back together. It's like a sparkle blue and white Strat. It's dope. It's a Japanese Squire from, like, the mid-80s, so it's dope. Um, but I got an Epiphone Les Paul. I got to go for my birthday and pick it out from American Music, and uh, which is where I used to see dun -dun -dun -dun, this guitar in the glass case when I was a really, really little kid, for those of you that were here last time. I got to pick out this Honey Burst Les Paul, and, like, I was so psyched, and, um, you know, I got to be the badass, and, like, you know, Mike had a bunch of guitars. Mike had, like, a, like, a, a squat, a red and black squire that was, like, cooler than mine, and he, he, he had put, like, a mini humbucker in the bridge, and he just knew more guitars about, that knew more about guitars than me at that time. He was a few years older than me, too. So I got my Les Paul, and I was like, I'm finally going to have Mike, you know. We practice for, like, a day, and I get to gloat, and then, um, I can't remember how I found out, but I found out that he had gotten the exact same guitar as me, but in, like, a cherry burst finish. And it's stupid to think about it now. Like, I should have been so psyched we both had Les Pauls, you know. We, that's what we wanted so bad. We listened to, the, like, Sunday Day Real Estate and that. First Foo Fighters record, and uh, that's the tone we wanted. Marshall and blah, blah, blah. oh, Mike also, like I said, had this, had gotten this um, 
Val State Marshall half stack that he would rarely bring to practice because he was weird about his gear. So I remember us getting in a fight over that because <laughs> I was super jealous and super young and he was all scared to tell me. He was scared to tell me that he had a Les Paul. So I was kind of pissed that he had one in the first place, but then I spun it like I was pissed off at it because he lied to me because I'm manipulative like that. But then we made up and it was all good and I realized, dude, we both have Les Pauls. It's sick.